BCTV's Ron Boyden here, set to welcome you to a special Black Friday edition of 545 Live. It's BCTV's weekly media roundup, as each week I get 15 minutes on a Friday night to take you through the area headlines, take a look at upcoming events. Plus, we'll break down uh, this Thanksgiving and upcoming holiday season, talk about uh, where to do your holiday shopping and plenty more. The uh, official coming up on deck tonight graphics, I believe uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the latest from Vermont Health Connect, a security breach there that involved personal ID data. We'll also get a seven town summary that includes a cash crunch in Newfane and some more DRB drama in Demerston, plus uh, Whitey Bulger. We'll find out the, the latest there, courtesy of the broadcast journalism class at Landmark College. All that and more, I'm gonna do it in 15 minutes. Heck, I'm gonna maybe even do it in a little bit less so we can all get out there and enjoy this uh, Black Friday weekend. In the meantime, stick with us right here on 545 Live. Back to 545 Live. That's footage from an interfaith Thanksgiving service hosted at First Baptist Church, courtesy of hardworking DCTV volunteer Karen Davis. As we get ready for a Thanksgiving edition of 545 Live, really a Black Friday special edition of 545 Live. Now, for many, the fridge, I'm sure, is still bursting at the seams with Thanksgiving leftovers. Uh, but for others in this here region plagued by rapidly decreasing food security, hunger does uh, really never take a break for the holidays. That's something that's prompted the local food and fundraising all stars behind Project Feed the thousands to up the ask for this year's 2013 campaign, which will seek to raise enough non-perishable food items and cash donations to last the area's food pantries and homeless shelters a full year. Now that's no small feat, but one that Project Feed organizers like longtime media sponsor Tim Johnson say are absolutely critical to each and every member of the community. Drop where you shop, make a donation and care of Project Feed at River Valley Credit Union, or feedthethousands.org, make a contribution there. Please, whatever you do this holiday season, think about your neighbors, your friends, your family. It could be you. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on in the stories here on a Friday edition of 545 Live and get ready to launch into a look at the Brattleboro Reformers online web video presence courtesy of tout.com. That's right, if you go to tout.com slash bratreformer, you can see uh, little videos uploaded by reformer reporters on the go as they report from the field, then follow it up with an in-depth article, which you can find in their paper by subscribing or picking one up on a newsstand, and of course, find them all at reformer.com as well. And as we talk Project Feed the Thousands, uh, that's where we'll take the next story as a uh, catch up with Kayla Rice's uh, tout.com posts. She's a reformer photographer. She caught up with Hannaford's uh, store manager, Art Messenger, as well as uh, the New England newspaper sales and marketing manager, Chris Olderman. Of course, Brattleboro area drop in center ED, Lucy Fortier outside Hannaford's. Uh, to announce the Project Feed supplemental campaign dubbed Feed Your Mind, Feed Your Family. Now, uh, for more on that, let's launch the video. Uh, we're here giving food away uh, with our Feed Your Mind, Feed a Family program, and uh, I'm happy to announce that with the partnership of Hannaford and uh, Rattleboro Ford and Subaru, that we're going to be donating uh, 50 boxes of food and 50 turkeys to the, the drop-in center. Again, that video on the Reformers tout.com channel, tout.com slash brat reformer, where you can see reformer reporters uh, as they upload on the go from the field, following up those articles at reformer.com. All right, and while we're talking holidays here, it's been a pop culture myth for years that depression and suicide spike during the Christmas season. Something that uh, Brattleboro Retreat Senior Medical Director Robin Ostrander says just isn't supported by the data, despite the common misperception. 
Uh, and while that could be seen as reassuring for area residents trying to keep a handle on extra family time while coping with depression, the disease is a serious one for anyone at any time of year. Something that can be addressed with a variety of treatments from medication to intensive therapy uh, to something a little more basic like sunlight. That's right, increased symptoms of depression this time of year are often attributed to the added pressure of the holidays, but studies suggest the changes in light are a far more likely culprit. Uh, and for those suffering from seasonal affective disorder, the results can be painful, but also simple to tackle through the use of sun lamps, a series of inexpensive products that use bulbs to mimic the intensity and color temperature of the sun itself, boosting vitamin D levels and exposing the brain to beneficial light patterns. If you are noticing that you're feeling tired or sad, those are signs of depression and it's worth talking to someone, a therapist, your regular doctor or you know, nurse practitioner, or physician assistant. Um, it doesn't necessarily require going straight to a mental health professional to say mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, but there's no need for a prescription for a light box. You could get one and plug it in and see what happens. Robin Ostrander on the program Keep Talking, a community dialogue on mental health produced by the Brattleboro Retreat in conjunction with BCTV and hosted by Office of Continuing Education Manager Gay Maxwell from the Brattleboro Retreat who uh, gathers with specialists in the area of mental health uh, and addictions to uh, talk about issues like the one she was talking about with the retreat senior medical director, Robin Ostrander there, depression and the holidays. All right, uh, we'll move on here. As this week, Governor Shumlin publicly chastised the state's lead healthcare official, Mark Larson, for his role in covering up a security breach in the state's controversial healthcare exchange website. Uh, that's a breach that allowed one user access to another resident's personal ID info, including their social security number, most importantly. That was an October 17th incident, but uh, one that was not revealed until later this month here, as uh, Larson publicly de denied during questioning on the House floor on November 5th before recanting his testimony to the dismay of Health Connect advocates and users everywhere, with credibility in the state's newest healthcare system in short supply already. And while state investigators believe the breach to be an isolated incident, Vermont legislators are urging all parties involved in maintaining the website to proceed with caution where areas of sensitivity regarding personal information are concerned. All right, uh, we'll move on in the script here. During last spring's groundbreaking ceremony for Brattleboro's upgraded wastewater treatment plant facility, town officials praised the construction process as the multi-million dollar upgrades landed the town on schedule and on budget. And while uh, it also allowed the plant to continue operating throughout the renovations, a year in headlines are a little less friendly, with PC Construction reportedly a month overdue for final renovations, a contingency addressed in the PC uh, Town original contract uh, in which the municipality could seek up to $1,500 a day in damages for each day the project remains unfinished. Something Brattleboro Public Works Director Steve Baird addressed in front of the board during a scheduled meeting aired live on PCTV earlier this month. It's important to make sure, first you do this analysis of, of the different particular items you're looking for, and you, you really base your decision on that to begin with. Then, the secondary part of the review is to actually look at the numbers. You can catch that full select board meeting at brattleborotv.org, and also head back into the video archives on our video on demand to check out that wastewater treatment plant uh, Ribbon cutting ceremony. All right, time to hit the national stage here. We'll bring in some uh, extra reporters for help on that one. But first, uh, I'll read a little script here. Perhaps the most notorious gangster since Prohibition, the South Boston Mafia leader Whitey Bulger has been sentenced to two life terms, plus an additional five years in prison, just in case those two lifetimes in jail wasn't enough. But uh, as family members of Bulger's victims turned out in full force at his November 14th sentence hearing, there were insults hurled from the back rows of the courtroom, uh, something that we now turn to Landmark College broadcast journalism major and host of their hit TV program, The Truth, Drew Orlock. Drew, uh, take it away. Tell us a little bit about uh, this trial and uh, the follow-up sentencing hearing in question. Families called him a coward, terrorist, psycho, Satan, and a rat while they had for opportunity to address him in court. They wouldn't even let him off the hook as they demanded his attention. A victim's son, Patrick Callahan, said to Bulger, You wouldn't even turn around and look at us, coward? Bulger chose not to speak in response to the families. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on here. And that will launch into our seven town summary here, including uh, the municipal happenings and all of BCTV's seven surrounding communities Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, and start in Dummerston. 
where uh, less than a year after a controversy surrounding Dummerston's Development Review Board Chair Herb Rest led to the select board denying his reappointment, the town's current DRB Chair Jack Lilly surprised the board at their November meeting announcing that he would be resigning his position as chair and his membership to the board effective immediately. Uh, and with Lilly uh, citing health reasons for his rapid departure, an in-depth Commons article did also uh, list the DRB's alleged missteps in properly documenting the minutes of their meetings in their article headline. I think this board has bullied us. I think you basically call in names and run away. I don't think it was intentional, but I think that's happened. I've read more than two dozen development review board decisions and I can discern no instances of bias or prejudice. They put great effort into evaluating each case that comes before them. Next up, a cash crunch in Newfane landed on local headline in the Reformer this past week, but it's nothing new for residents of Newfane, South Newfane, and Williamsville as uh, the lingering effects of Tropical Storm Irene continue to force uh, the town to make some financial moves, this time uh, narrowly avoiding missing a $200,000 plus payment to the state of Vermont. Something Select Board Chair John Mack said he uh, hoped was a temporary situation, but is coming to understand that it will continue. During the flood, we did things to make the town whole, and now two and a half years later, we still don't have those, the monies to cover it. And when we did budgeting, we've done a various things to try to resolve it, but the board resisted on a couple of occasions, putting a sufficient money aside to be certain we were okay. And the end result is that right now we are in a difficult position. All right, from there, we'll uh, turn our gaze to Washington, D.C. and check in with Vermont's uh, politicians on the national level here and uh, launch into our latest story, looking uh, down in the Capitol. Now, last week's Senate vote uh, to allow overruling of filibuster attempts with a simple majority vote, which is down from the previously required 60 vote minimum, still has Republicans outraged. The majority of Washington analysts, though, on both sides of the aisle seem to agree it a necessary measure to stem the high profile inertia plaguing the country's national politics as House and Senate Republicans continue to challenge a Democratic agenda by any means necessary, culminating, of course, uh, with this year's global economy shaking shutdown of the U.S. federal government at large, but landing in the headlines most recently with the Senate minority leaders filibustering not once uh, but three times in the month of November alone in an attempt to block President Obama's nominations for the U.S. Court of Appeals in D.C., prompting longtime Vermont Senator Patrick Leahy to back the changes to filibuster law, citing the balance between due process and ability to keep the government running. This is an impartial court. But if we play political games with our federal judiciary, how long are the American people going to trust the impartiality of our federal courts? At what point do these games start making people think maybe this is not an independent judiciary? That does it here for another edition of 545 Live. Thanks for joining us. Uh, but before we uh, tune out here, we'll check in with the calendar of events, see what's coming up for the area, including the Putney Craft Tour. Let's roll it. This Thanksgiving Black Friday weekend is part of the 35th annual Putney Craft Tour. It's 26 area artists across the Putney region open their studios to the public this coming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adding local paintings, hand-blown glass, wrought iron, hand-sewn quilt work, and much, much more, all as options to your holiday list this year. We've decided that it would be beneficial if we formed a little organization because there were a lot of craftspeople in Putney and open our respective studios so that people could come and see what we did and where we worked. And rather than just seeing an object in a store, you got to see where it was made and who it was made by. A segment there of BCTV's video calendar sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan. Taking a look each week at area events in the form of an interactive video with clickable links to organizer websites. You can catch that full video at youtube.com slash Brattleboro TV and brattleborotv.org. All right, that really does do it here for a jam-packed 15-minute edition of 545 Live. But we'll be back next week when we head out on the streets of Brattleboro for a live gallery walk edition from downtown. That's right, it's Christmas gallery walk. Nothing better here in Brattleboro, so be sure to check Check that out 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time right here on BCTV Channel 8. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.